This is what they call a TT200. It's made by the Tough Spock company. It's got the uh, hard lids that basically sit straight up and down on each side. It's an older hot tub. Uh, and when we got out to the house, uh, the cord had been cut. Well, no hot tub's gonna work without the cord cut. So I'll bet you that's the problem. But anyways, I figure we'll get it off the trailer. We'll start playing with it, pull the sides off all the way around and see if we can find anything wrong with this thing. Uh, this will probably make somebody a great gift for Thanksgiving. Now for the fun part. Okay, now that we have the hot tub in the shop, I figured I'd give you some details on this. This is a Tough Spa TT200. It was made by Tough Spa. They quit making this particular model approximately five years ago. So I wanna say right around 2014 or 2015, they went to the new model. This hot tub from side to side is 60 inches and from uh, left to right would be about 72. From the bottom to this edge is about 29 and to the very top of the covers is about 36. So this is a cool, what they say is a two person hot tub. I call it a very cozy two. Um, man, if you can get four people in this hot tub, you're doing pretty good. It's got clips all the way around. I'm not a big fan of the clips, but because of safety, you gotta put them on there. To open the tops, the only way to do it is you, oh, forgot one. You lift here and then you gently let it fall. If you let it slam down, what happens is you end up breaking these arms. If you break these arms, to my knowledge, you cannot buy them in singles anymore. You have to buy the whole set. The whole set can cost you several hundred dollars. So whenever you open these, gently open them and you know just don't let them slam. But this is what they call the TT200. It doesn't have a lot of jets. It's 110 plug and play. You've, uh, it's got two bench seats. It's got three jets on one side plus two, and then it's got two over here plus three. So you got a total, and then you've got one underneath and one underneath. So this thing's got a total of 12 jets. This is where your filter sits. Filter's not in too bad a shape. And then you got your suction down there. So anyways, these are a really cool two-person intimate hot tub. And like I said, this is what they call a TT 200. So we're going to go ahead and open this thing up and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. Generally speaking on all hot tubs, wherever this is, is where the uh, pump will be because that way it's got ventilation. Through here it says the drain and then over there on the other side that is where the cord comes out. So that just gives you a couple ideas. If you ever find one of these hot tubs that's used, they're not hard to fix up as you see. I'm going to fix this one up and then I'm going to make somebody a smoking deal on it. Okay, first things first, whenever you're gonna work on a hot tub, find some place to put all the screws. Since these are already a little bit out, I'm gonna pull them the rest of the way out. That way I can do a thorough cleaning of underground. Ah. Looks like there's been rodents inside. So maybe, maybe that's why it doesn't work anymore. It's not hard to take the sides off. The panels on a Tough Spa come off very simple, and they come off the same way on every Tough Spa model. It's just several screws, and like I said, usually underneath this would be where the motor is. So we're gonna figure out what's wrong with this thing, and... Okay, since this was loose, that tells me that possibly a rodent got inside. Seeing all this stuff all chewed up, tells me I am almost 100% certain that a rodent has been inside this hot tub. Okay, I figured before I get too far into this video, I'd give you guys some tips. Because of the mess it's already making, just because of all this styrofoam that looks like it was chewed up from here, I went and got my shop vac ready for myself. Another thing you wanna do is up here, write the number one, and on the back of this, write the number one. The reason why, you want these to go back into the same place. 
So you just put a one up there, and then two, three, four, five, all the way around. It's just a good idea, common practice that I've gotten into and wanted to share that with you guys. Okay, before I get too far into this, I figured I'd show you what I found. Right here, you can see all this white, all this corrosion, just like I've showed you guys in other videos. That could be what's causing the breaker to trip when the lady said it didn't work. But I still definitely want to know why they cut the cord. the heater looks good but look let me show you okay here's the sensors you can kind of see where it's leaking water could be one problem but this looks really good right here all that looks good everything inside even this so we might just have to clean this up a little bit so huh I wonder if there really is anything wrong with this thing a lot of rodent crap down there though. So we'll go ahead and vacuum that out and get it cleaned up. And we'll work our way around. In some of my last videos, I've had several comments where people have asked me why I take so much time cleaning the inside of the hot tub. And the reason why I do that, and I, I take the sides off quite often and I'll vacuum everything out, is because sometimes you miss things. And when I go to either work on a hot tub for a customer, I wanna make sure that I'm very thorough and I'll make sure that I'm doing a quality job as well as if I sell a used hot tub, I wanna make sure I'm giving my customers a quality product. So that's the reason why I take the initiative to take the sides off, clean everything, tighten everything up. Sometimes I'll find screws that are loose and I'll go, well, why are those screws loose? Well, screws don't just loosen on a hot tub. Somebody's been in there. So what I'll do is I'll get in there and find out that maybe they did a shoddy repair or whatever, and then I have to go back and fix it before I either you know, give it on to a customer or fix a customer's product, or I'll fix a used one that I have that I want to sell. I want to make sure that I've taken the time to make sure it's ready to go so that that customer will have many years of enjoyable hot tub use. So that's the reason why I always take the time to vacuum it out. It usually takes me to clean out a hot tub all the way around. If I'm not videotaping like I am today, I can usually rip the sides off all the way around and vacuum it out in under 30 minutes. And then I can go through, I fill it up with water, and I can find the problems very quickly. And then I can put it back together. I think it saves time, and I think it offers a more quality finished product when I go to sell the hot tub to a customer. So, anyways, I'm going to get back to work and show you how I finish up. Well, as you can tell, somebody down here has been having a heyday. It's only from here down. So I'm not finding anything up here. Not to say that they couldn't have gotten up here, but I'm not finding anything, but everything's along the bottom. So I'll just do a good job cleaning it all out and vacuuming it all up. Well, I got around here, and as I'm getting farther to the back, I'm not finding as much, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean it all up anyway, just to make sure. Okay, for those of you that are not familiar with how to wire a 110 plug and play hot tub, I figured I'd go through this with you. This is a Balboa product. It's a VS series, okay? This particular pack can be ran both 110 and 220. So this is a kind of a very, very cool pack. On the back, it's got the schematics if you want to turn around and change it from 110 to 220 and stuff, you can get on the back and show you. But right now today, I'm just going to show you how, since the cord is cut, we got to replace it. So what you're going to do is over here, you got two screws. You're going to disconnect those two screws. Down here is your ground lug. Your wire is the green one right here and it comes through and your ground lug is right there. Now, since it's only be running 110 plug and play, the only wires that you have hooked up are the common wire and the black hot wire. You do not hook up the bottom red one. So this is just how you do it, 110 plug and play. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, now the cord that I'm going to be replacing it with has a GFCI breaker built right into the plug. 
So this is just a 110 plug and play. It's got the reset and stuff like that right here in the buttons. And then right here, you've got your ground, you got your hot wire, and then you got your white common. So it's pretty simple to hook it up. It's 15 foot cord. And then we'll go ahead and disconnect this one and hook up that one. Okay, now to unhook this, you're gonna need a couple things. You will need a common screwdriver and that you'll need for your ground. So hopefully I can do this with one hand. You pull your ground out. You're gonna use the same common screwdriver and you spin it around and you're gonna pull that, you're gonna pull out your hot and then you pull out your ground. Nothing hard about this. So you pull out those two wires, you got all three. Now you'll need a Phillips because it makes it a lot easier. And then this is the retainer that holds the cord so that it doesn't get ripped out of the pack and damage it. Major. Needs a little bit more. Okay. Okay, first things first, we're gonna feed the cord up and in there. And like I said, I'm trying to do this with one hand. So hopefully I can. Without a doubt, I'm sure I can. Yep. There we go. Okay. So all you're gonna do is repeat what it took to take it apart. Push the pieces back in there. You don't have to go crazy. Stuff. Tighten, tighten down your back part, which keeps it in place so that it doesn't move on you. Okay. I always hook up the ground first. Okay, the ground goes in the hole. It says ground right on it. It'll slide right through the hole. Back the screw out just a little bit more. Okay. And screw that down to make sure it's nice and tight. And stuff. This one, you back it out just a little bit. Make sure that the screw that you get the screw out enough. Take the common wire and push it in there. As you can see, this ain't hard to do. Tight. Pull the black wire and do the same thing. Back the black wire, just back it out a little bit. Because when I pull them apart, I just unscrew them just far enough to get the wire out and stuff. Hit the, hit the camera, sorry everybody. Give it a little tug, make sure they're in there. Make sure these are snug. Okay, that's all it takes. You got your ground right there, you can see the, the ground wire coming out. You got your white wire, your black wire. Pretty simple, make sure these are tight. Okay, we're done with that. Okay, got an extension cord. I got my GFCI plug that I just wired in. Go ahead and plug it in. Red light came on. That shuts it off. That turns it on. You can tell that it is working because the red light came on. Okay. Let's check out what's going on with the hot tub. Well, when I turned it on, it says PR. So normally that means prime. So let's just go ahead and let's hit the jets. Even though there's no water in it, what can it hurt? Well, I can hear the electric motor running. That's second speed. Well, that tells me everything works. I can hear it down here too. Well, I don't know about you, but let's go ahead and fill this sucker up with water and let's see what happens. What do you think? Before I go ahead and fill this thing up with water, I'm gonna suck out all the crap. I'm gonna take out the filter and I'm gonna suck all the water out of the filter area and clean it all up. No use putting clean water in a dirty hot tub. Thank <laughs> you. 
This will work. Okay, just like I've showed you guys in the past, this is the filter area. This covers the filter, but what I can do is I can slide this down, I can take my hose and I can stick it right down so that it's going to be right where the filter hole is so that it gets all the way down to the bottom of the hot tub. Now this one does not have any diverter valves on it, so I don't have to worry about that. This is pretty much an all or none type of hot tub. It doesn't divert. It does have air valves that turn off and on. I'm not worried about those. So we'll go ahead and turn on the water and see what happens. Well, it's been filling now for about four or five minutes. So it'll take about another probably 10 minutes to get up over the highest jet. So we just need it to be a couple inches over. Well, we already have a leak right here. It's just this. And as you can see, this thing is loose. So that's all that is, is loose. I'll tighten that up and get rid of that leak. So anyways, yeah, we got one leak so far in all this water out here so we'll go ahead and fix that well I got the leak slowed down but it looks like I'm gonna have to pull the heater tube out clean up everything and then put a couple of new gaskets in there so not a big big job it'll just take me a couple minutes to do it well as you can see I had to empty the tub so what I'm gonna have to do is Disconnect this, I'll disconnect this, I'll put new O-rings in, th in this one, in this one, and I'll probably put one at the uh, pump also. I just couldn't get it to stop leaking by tightening it, so I figured I'll take all that apart, clean it all up, put some new gasket sealer in there, and seal it back up and see if that fixes the problem. Okay, I've taken the heater out of the pack and it's pretty simple to do. You have one union right here and you have one right there. I just um, took the Phillips head screws out of the union and just split it apart so it would come apart. Now on the, the pump and motor, this is actually hooked to it. Now I'll start with the pump and motor. Over here was an O-ring and this was the O-ring that was there and these are supposed to be round. Well, this one is very flat and stuff so it's been squished this way so I'm gonna go ahead and put a brand new o-ring in here and then on this side we had this right here and as you can see it's just all falling apart in my hand you know it's just all breaking you know so and that's the way it was on both this side and it was the same thing on this side the one that was over here so the one that was leaking was this one so now you can see where you got a little bit of rust down there and stuff like that um, we'll go ahead and clean all that up and then we'll put the new um, o-ring in um, new o-ring see this one's more round and stuff and it's not flat and that'll go on the top now this particular one goes for the um, the heater gasket and it's got like a little um, ridge and it rides inside this little groove all the way around so when you push it down it sits in there really nice. Now I will use a little bit of silicone on both this and the O-ring. I know a lot of other techs that are watching this video right now don't like the fact that I use silicone. There's a lot of techs and a lot of manufacturers that say you don't need to. Well, they're correct, you don't need to. And I don't use very much. I use very, very, very little bit. Um, I find that it just, makes it seal a little bit better. Um, it's just something that I do. If you don't want to use silicone because the manufacturer tells you not to, then don't use it. It's not going to void your warranty or anything like that. Um, it's just something that I've done over the years that I found just makes it seal better. I hate getting callbacks and I always like doing a really good job while I'm doing it and I found it works best. So with that, we're going to go ahead and we'll seal this up and I'll show you how I do it. As I started cleaning this, I noticed that somebody used some plumber's putty down here. Don't ever use plumber's putty because it gets stuck in the threads 
and that's probably the reason why I couldn't tighten it down. Now it doesn't bother me that I have to take this apart to fix it, but definitely don't ever use plumber's putty on this. Just a bad idea. Okay, this is the heater tube and I've cleaned the sides and got it all ready to go. You wanna make sure that these things spin real easy when you go to put them back on. And I cleaned up both sides. Yeah, somebody had put plumber's putty inside there thinking that they were gonna fix the leak. Plumber's putty's good stuff. Doesn't work too well on hot tubs. So the silicone product that I use is called Silicone Mask. It's 100% silicone, sets up in about 30 minutes. It's waterproof, water resistant, whatever, you know, it's weather tight, weatherproof, however you want to word it. It's clear, it works really well. Um, you can get it at Home Depot, like I said. Uh, try it out, see if you like it. I actually have great results with this product and I'll continue to use it. You need a caulk gun. Inside the caulk gun, you slide that end in. Now, I've already been using this one, so it's already been cut and I've used a little bit. Uh, normally you can just squeeze the end a little bit and it'll start coming out. Sometimes you can get it with a screw where I'll take a wood screw and you can screw it in there just a little bit. Okay, and what happens is it'll actually grab onto the silicone that's dried up in the end and you can pull it out. And then you can start using it again. Take a pair of pliers and then just pull that out and it'll pull out all the dry stuff on the inside. Just like that. Okay, and then you squeeze it again, and it just starts coming out just like that. And you don't need a lot. This is probably all I'll need for all three pieces, is that much. So, what you're gonna do is you take the O-ring, and just kind of put it around the O-ring. And that's all, you, do. you don't get, need a lot, okay? Now the O-ring goes on this side, and I'll push that in there. The O-ring goes on this side. Just push it into place so it all gets down there, okay? Just like that. You still got a little bit on my fingers. Might need just a little bit more. Normally I can do all three pieces. Then what you do is take this and just put a little bit on both sides. Same thing. Take the other gasket and just put a little bit on both sides and then just rub it around till you can feel the sticky all the way around. Okay, you don't need a lot. Okay, that's all you do. Now I'll show you how to install it. Okay, first things first. You're gonna take your gasket that you've already put the silicone on and you're gonna stick it over here on this side. Now you can see on this side, there's a little ridge that goes all the way around. You can, there's two sides to this gasket. Put it so that the little ridge is toward the piece. And see, that's the reason why I use a little bit of silicone because it'll actually stay in place while I'm doing this. Okay, so I put that one in place first. Then what I do, this is the piece that's gonna go onto the pump. I've already put the silicone on that. I take this piece and I put it right here, just like so. Okay, since I know it goes on to this piece, I'm gonna put it on that piece and then I'm going to slide the connection into it, just like so, and I can turn it. I don't need to get it real tight, I just want it right like that, okay? Because what I'm gonna do is, I'm then gonna slide this in, I'll get this lined up with the pump, and then I'll get this end lined up with over here, okay? Okay, now I have this piece hooked up over here. You're gonna wanna make sure that you Open up this 3 8 just a little bit. It slides into right here. And then the other one slides in at the bottom down here. So just make sure that you've backed out the nuts a little bit so they slide in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slide the heater across and we'll hook it up here first. We'll get that threaded on and then we'll come back and we'll hook this one in. Then we'll last we'll do these. Okay? Try to show you this as best I can. Gonna slide it across, try to get it in place. Here. Once we got it close, we take the fitting and we just kind of slide the fitting and just spin it. 
Doesn't have to be tight yet because we're not done. Just get it snug. Okay. Now, once you've got that snug, then you're going to move into this part right here. We'll get that in there. Come on. Once we slide that across, get everything in place. It does take a little bit of finesse to, and just got to open it up a little bit. You don't want to ruin these two sensors, so you got to jiggle it around a little bit. Okay, part of the problem I was having is this tube right here, this small tube, has a slight little bend in it. So I had to spin that around. Once I spun that around, all that went into place. And then this right here will go right into place. Really simple. So now I'll go ahead and tighten it all down, and then I'll show you what I do from there. Okay, I now have this tight, I have this tight, and I have this tight. So all that's sealed up. Next thing we'll do is we will plug in our sensors. You got a sensor over here, and you got a sensor right here. I always run the wires underneath to get, get them out of the way. You got two blocks right here. Okay, the one on the left goes to the sensor on the left. Pretty simple. They just plug in there, no big deal. Pretty simple. Okay, now we'll go ahead and we'll do this. Now this, this particular heater has a 3 8 on the bottom with a 3 8 on the top. No big deal. But always use a 3 8 wrench or a pair of needle nose, something to grab onto this so that you don't twist these off. If you twist them off, game over. You gotta replace either the tube if you want to, but you definitely have to replace the um, heating element on the inside. Now, I'm gonna ohm out this before I put it back together just to show you guys how I do it but it ohmed out to 15, which tells me it's a 4.0 kilowatt heater, okay? So what I have is my ohm meter. It's just made by Milwaukee. I like these the best. They're about $129 for a meter like this on eBay. I think these are the best for doing just the type of electrical work that I do. So we're gonna go ahead and set it on ohms. Right down there. Go ahead and show you kind of what happens. It's on low. Okay. When I touch the two probes together, right here, should be 15. 15. That tells me that the heater should work properly. I can also tell if the connection is good by going down to sound, which is right here. So what we can do is we can, like that, when you touch the two probes together, it sings. So we can go ahead and do that with the, with the uh, heating element also. So that's a couple different ways to tell if your heater is good, or it should be good, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and put the screws, or the nuts back on top, bolts it all together. Okay, this part's pretty simple. You just push them back down on top. Three eighths nut. And the nut's got a little bitty washer on the back that'll hold it in place. Now you don't have to have Gorilla hands with these. You can wrench the crap out of it with your wrench. Just get them so they're snug. Okay. Just like that. I'll go ahead and tighten those down with a wrench. Okay, just a quick little recap of what we've done. We've replaced the gasket here. We pulled the heater tube out and cleaned everything. We checked the continuity on the heating element. It appears to be good, so that's a good sign. We reconnected the um, sensors, checked those out. They appear to be really good. We put a new gasket here. We cleaned out the threads on both this this union and this union cleaned out all the, looks like it was plumber's putty, but who knows what it really was. We cleaned out all that, and then we put cleaned out all this and put a brand new O-ring there. We used just a little bit of silicone to seal it all up. Now we're gonna go ahead and start filling this thing up again and see if we can get it fired up. So. Well, this thing's filling up pretty quick. We're about halfway up and not a drop near the pump, nothing under going on right here. And when I come across, 
nothing over there. So I'm very, very pleased. No leaks. So hopefully this thing will be filled up in the next five, 10 minutes and then we'll fire it up. I'll show you how kind of a hot tub we have here. This is gonna make somebody an awesome hot tub. You guys are not gonna believe this. I found another leak, but it's not coming from any of this. So I'll show you where it's coming from. This sucks. And I was about halfway full with the water, but if you look way in the back, you look right underneath this white fitting right here. I don't know how well you can see it. You can see it dripping. So I'm gonna have to now take that one off and fix that. Not a hard fix. Probably take me about 10 or 15 minutes to do it, but it's gotta be done. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Well, once again, we're sucking the water out of the hot tub. I am using my little giant pump. This thing pumps out water so fast, does it at about 77 gallons a minute. Might be a little bit less than that because I've got a long hose going out there, but these little giant pumps are just awesome. So we'll get this emptied and I'll take it apart and reseal it, put it back together. Okay, the tub's all empty. That's all I need to be is maybe a half inch or an inch below that jet just so that the water doesn't go out the hole. The rest of this water can stay in there for all I care. And we'll go ahead and clean up the mess over here. I gotta hurry up because I've got a big mess now. Okay, I've already pulled the one hose clamp off that goes to the big one. That one was right here. There's another little hose clamp right here. I pulled that one off. And as you see, this thing moves all over the place. You can see the jet is just not tight. So I'm not just going to be one of those guys that tightens it up. I'm actually going to pull it apart, put a little silicone on it, screw it back together. That way, when it goes off to a new customer, I'm not going to get a call back. Okay, heat gun in hand. That's all you're going to do is heat up the tubing a little bit. I don't have to get that close. This heat gun gets really hot really quick. And what you're trying to do is these tubes, after a couple of years, they get real rigid. They get really stiff and they won't move. So what you do is you just heat them up with a heat gun and they become pliable again and you can pull them right off. Okay, now if I move this tube around, I can see the water moving around inside the tube. So I don't wanna get a bunch of water inside of here again. So what I'm gonna do is take my shop back and I'm gonna suck from the back side of this jet right here. I'm gonna suck it all the water out. So what I'll do is I'll come out on this side. I'll just stick the, and I'll suck all the water that's in that tube out of it. That way I don't have to have a great big oh, mess on the inside of the hot tub all over again. It'll take a couple seconds and then it'll be clear. Okay, I now have all the water out of this tube. I heated it up. Now what I do is I take a pair of pliers and I try to start twisting it over here. That's all I gotta do is twist it a little bit. It'll break the seal that's down there by the by the jet. And then you can just, it just comes right out and you don't end up breaking anything. Okay, do the same thing with the other one and I'll pull that jet out. Look how much that thing moves. Eh, this won't take that long to fix. Okay, I now have both. It's moving really simple. You just unscrew it. Take it out. All fall apart. Just like that. Take these two pieces out. There's my retaining ring, and then this is kind of a collar that sits against the uh, tub. So, come on the inside. Yeah, if you look at it, you can see where everything got crusty again. See? Yeah, the O-ring's just junk. So I might have to get a new O-ring and put a new O-ring in there. Okay, what causes the jet to have the leak? Generally speaking, you can turn this one way and it opens it up wide. You turn it the other way and it, sh it restricts the water. So what happens is from silt, from sand, from dirt, from skin from our body. Anything that gets in the water gets down in between the jet and the jet housing, okay? And then somebody tries to turn it, they're trying to turn it, and what happens is they turn this 
and it didn't turn this, it turned the jet housing and it broke the seal between the hot tub and the jet housing. So what happens is, like now, I mean, this thing was so stiff when I pulled it apart, it wouldn't move. Now, it comes out, no problem. You just pull it up. Then when you put it back in, just be gentle. You got little bitty clips right here. You don't want to break these clips, okay? So when you're putting it back in, just look for these clips. If these clips are broken right here, that's the reason why your jet keeps falling out. So you always want to check the little clips. If they're broke, you need to get new ones. Or I can tell you a quick fix. You can actually cut these off. So you can cut, the, you can cut this little tab off. You can cut this tab off. Now you can see where this right down here, the water comes in and if you turn it one way, you'll have solid and the other way has a hole. If you go and cut the jet right here, you can turn around and just put a bead of silicone, push the jet in, let it set up overnight, and you just won't be able to turn it off or on. Now, if you grab onto this and spin it, it's gonna come out, of course. But that's a cheap way to just fix a jet. So anyways, I've cleaned it all out. I've got all the sand out of there. You gently push it in to where it'll, you gotta spin it to where you find where it actually goes in at. There's where it goes in. And you see, I can still pull it out. And then you turn it all one way and you turn it the other way. If I keep, it's got like, I call it like a speed bump. It goes one way, goes the other way. And then if you keep going counterclockwise, so if you keep going counterclockwise, you can hear that little click. That's kind of like the speed bump. Go past the speed bump and then the jet will come apart. Put it back together and you just, put it. so that's kind of the analogy of a jet. Hope that helps. I'll get a gasket. We'll put a new gasket on here. We'll silicone this sucker back together and fill it up for the third time and see if we got it fixed. Third time's a charm. Okay, just like in my other previous videos, we're gonna use the silicone max and we just put a little bit of silicone at the bottom of the, of the jet. You don't have to put a lot, just put a little bit. Don't go crazy. Just like that. We'll take it. Just take your finger and just push it around. Take your gasket, slide your gasket down. That'll make it seal really good, just like that. Take the excess that's on your finger and just wipe it around the gasket really quick. Nothing fancy. You don't need a lot of silicone. You just need a little bit. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you something about this gasket. This gasket is, a, is an L-shaped gasket. In other words, it goes down and over. It's not flat. So it kind of sits into the side of the tub a little bit better and it seals really good. So this is what they call an L-shaped gasket. I really like using these. Okay, we're now gonna go ahead and stick the jet in. Pretty simple. Stick the jet in the hole. Once you stick the jet in the hole, then you're gonna take these pieces. This piece goes on first, and then the nut goes on afterwards. So, it's not hard to do. So if you're gonna work on spas, you're gonna have to get used to working with one hand in some spots. It is almost impossible to get both hands in there. And just like that, it's tight. So now I'll go ahead and put the tubes on and be done. Okay, I got the jet in place. Now I'm going to heat up the end of the hose. And I just got to get to shoot heat toward it. The heat down there will warm it up and that'll make the tube pliable. So it's pretty simple. Oh yeah, nice and squishy. Now I'll just take a little bit of glue. I don't need a lot. I'm just gonna dab it right on it and that'll 
when I put the hose on, I can twist the hose around to the left, you know, and I can twist it around to the right. Just like so. Pretty simple. And I'll put the hose clamp on. Just take a couple seconds, so it'll be nice and dry. And it won't go nowhere. Yeah, that'll work. I'll do the same with this one. See, this one's all, it's stiff. See, it's hard to squeeze, watch. Take this, just shoot it right in the end like that. Hand's getting warm. Doesn't take very long. Okay, now watch. See how nice and squishy it becomes? Okay, take a little bit of glue again. You don't need a lot. Just put, put it inside and just dab it around inside. Nothing fancy. And you just go ahead and you slide it right over the hole. Just like so. Okay. And you're gonna take the hose clamp, get the hose clamp put into place. like so and grab onto it with a pair of pliers yep can't get it that way gotta spread them out a little bit okay you grab onto it just like that squeeze it together and slide it on like that. Okay, I got both hose clamps on. I got the front one on and I got the one in the back. I got the nut on the back tight. So we'll let this thing sit for the next couple hours and then we'll fill it up with water. Okay, well it's been about four hours since we glued the jet in place. It's right there underwater, about three inches of water. So we're going to go on the back side and see if I've got rid of my leak. Well, there's where it is, or where it was, and it appears that it is fixed. So, hopefully we can get this thing filled and then we'll test it out and see if we can make it work. So, pretty simple fix. Okay, well I've got the tub all full of water, and now I'm gonna go ahead and fire it. No movement. A lot of gurgling. So, what do you do when you got an airlock? I've told you this guy a bunch, bunch of times. Grab a plunger, stick the plunger. Do not use the plunger that you use inside your house. Stick it over the filter. Just plunge it. Voila, that's all it takes. Well, I now have the hot tub all up and running. If I hit the second jet, you got some power. So this is a rock and roll hot tub. It's got a colored light down there, LED. So this is gonna be make somebody a super hot tub. So if you wanna know what filter setting you're put, starting in, you go to the temperature. You hit the temperature, it'll start flashing over here. Once it starts flashing, then you hit the jets once. Oop, didn't do it fast enough. Hit the temperature and hit the jets. Okay, we're on F1. F1 means it'll go all the way to 104. If we went down to F2, it'll only go to 85. And then you can go all the way around stuff. We want it in F1, that'll go to 104 degrees. We hit the jets once and that sets it back to 75. This light should come on here in a second. When that light comes on, that means the hot tub is heating. Now you've also got colored LED lights, which that's what this will run. So this is a pretty wazoo hot tub. I really like it. It's gonna make somebody a very, very, very nice hot tub. So no leaks underneath down here. So I'm really pleased with that. 
and this motor runs very quiet so I really like that also so anyways that's our hot tub rebuilt I just heard it go click the temp light is on which means the hot tub is heating so anyways everybody that's how you fix a hot tub you know take the sides off vacuum it out fill it up with water start looking for leaks so with that my name is Scott I'm with the Arizona Hot Tub Factory and they call me the Spa Man. And remember, it's just a hot tub in your backyard. It blows bubbles and heats up. Don't go crazy. Have a great day, everybody.